Hello and welcome to the show for February's episode 100. I thought, what better way than to go through some of the outtakes that we have had while filming various stuff. Starting off with a, a fair bit, actually, from the uh, 21 Ways to Kill a Sylvia. This did take a fair bit of doing, as uh, on this one, uh, we were trying to have the, the GTR crash into the cars. Everything was going well, the GTR crashed very well, I forgot how to film. I was uh, not quite used to the drone camera at this point. In fact, actually, that was about the best position crash that we had of the, of the entire one. I managed to completely and utterly uh, look in the wrong place. The Mustang then forgot how to go sideways. I don't quite know what that was in terms of cornering, and the GTR managed to miss everyone completely. So that, that, that one there did not work at all. The Mustang then remembered how to go sideways and remembered a little bit too much and very, very nearly spun it in the GTR bailed when realised that the uh, shot wasn't going to work. With the sand dunes and, well, I, I might have given slightly duff directions to the car. I was expecting to see some racing trucks at any point appear over that, just over that dune, and they weren't. They were over the one behind it. Yeah, it is quite difficult to mark out sand dunes as to where <laughs> I'm supposed to be going. That one was completely and utterly my bad. I just directed the Sylvia down the wrong path and uh, yeah, we missed. Surprisingly, the bump into the Volvo part was also a little bit more on the difficult side to film. Yeah, managing to come to a complete halt before you bump into the Volvo, it doesn't look particularly fantastic either. <laughs> when you go at those low, low speeds, the brakes on these cars are pretty pretty damn powerful. Uh, we do manage to bump into the Volvo. I had some trouble getting the Sylvia going once more as the horde of cars managed to come through and the Nissan is nowhere to be seen. It does eventually roll back, but uh, yeah. Again, that doesn't quite have the effect that we were going for. Uh, and then the horde of Volvos go angrily running back. Uh, with the car rolling down the hill, this is actually a little bit more difficult in that I didn't want the car to be seen, you know, steering. We wanted it to be just a roll down a hill into a tree. Well, we'd managed to line it up with the one destructible tree in the entire area. So it crashes into the tree and the tree falls apart. Again, not, not quite the effect that we were going for. This, though, was the most awkward of scenes. Trying to get the Jaguar police cars across in front of the Sylvia to make the road. Roadblock. Timing was crucial for this to work, and on the first attempt, we were a little bit too late. On the next attempt, timing was better, although they left a lovely Sylvia-sized gap. <laughs> he drove straight through, and the roadblock did a much better job of stopping the chasing Jaguar. Yep, the Fowl Race Police Department very much in attendance now had got the timing a little bit better. However, I hadn't really got my camera positioning. This was actually a really, really good shot. Unfortunately, I was way too far back. And that meant that we barely saw through the smoke and the horde of cars. You could barely see that it was a Sylvia even, you know, getting involved in this police chase. So I had to move the camera a little bit further forward. Some more very sideways actions from the Jaguars made a lovely roadblock and then through the middle popped out the Sylvia. There was a bit of a gap as one of the cars was reversing back in just as the Sylvia hit. He got nudged. Now, when we were doing the drifting, I think we were waiting for somebody to uh, to come back, and this was the scene that, that that I saw while I was flying around with drone camera. We decided to try and fit as many cars as possible on the back of a flatbed truck, and Forza Physics being, well, Forza Physics, and it was up to its, its usual stuff, really. <laughs> Woody's just about clung on the side, BMW trying to get involved, doesn't quite make it, and now there's a Toyota rolled off, the Corvette is at all sorts of a wonky angle, and yeah, Forza Physics is... His falls of physics at its best. I think there was a ute involved. Some of the crates got quite angry. There's an escort at the back. Yeah. Turns out they weren't particularly happy. Uh, as we were trying to uh, do the race car flyby, this did take a couple of attempts as well. All the race cars come soaring past, and we wanted to have them all vanishing off into the distance. The problem was AI traffic getting in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Three or four cars scattered across the road after the race cars had, uh, had gone past. Yeah, that didn't go to plan. During the hypercar rally, I may have got the Vulcan stuck a little bit. Turns out these rocks are not a good place to go with a hypercar. A Reliant comes to try and rescue me, who then immediately gets stuck alongside me. Uh, then an Ultima comes to try and help, kind of frees the Reliant. The Ultima's now stuck. Another Reliant is also stuck. The uh, Reliant, the Black Reliant gets reset at the top of the rocks and does eventually slide down and free my car. Yeah, it turns out it's not a good place to uh, park your vehicles. Also, the poor Black Reliant keeps getting reset on the rocks as well, which is not the greatest thing from the game. 
yeah, hypercars and slightly going off-roading can get you into an awful, awful lot of trouble. Having got my vehicle rescued is, is not too keen on uh, getting out through the water. I uh, go to turn it around and very nearly get it stuck again. And almost managed to beach it. And that's the, the place where I actually had a lot of trouble in the race where I spun the uh, the Vulcan. Yeah, you don't want to go out there. Uh, this, this is not particularly good. We did also learn that uh, the Jeep has a bit of a party trick. It can do <laughs> wheelie. And if you time it right, you can wheelie it and bounce it across the front of a car. Which is... Um, yeah, quite well. We've got a Vulcan. This is quite impressive. You can certainly really launch the launch the car. It's a little bit more on the uh, on the awkward side. We're trying to get a, a number of cars uh, lined up. You really have to get the timing right with the Jeep to uh, make sure that you've got the uh, the bounce. It was a bit more of a kind of drive across the roofs of some very very expensive hypercars. It, it kind of worked, but uh, yeah, the first one was probably the the best sort of launch that we had. Now, on to GTA 5. There is always the time when we're having to wait for somebody to get a car or to, or to travel to a location. Then we end up doing silly things like this. We found that, um, yeah, the bonnets of my ranch are made for quite a um, entertaining playground. If you could time the opening and closing right as people were climbing on it, you could make people fall over. And we were trying to play the game of how many could we make fall over. Or how many could we stand on the bonnet as well. Not quite as much fun as with the Banshee. I think the 900R. You could actually launch people into the air with the bonnet opening and closing. With this, you can kind of launch the car backwards. <laughs> as, as I, was, I was trying to time it better and better so that someone was climbing, like physically climbing onto the bonnet. That is when you, you activated it so that it, it knocked them over. In all of it, I'd managed to knock somebody to get stuck in the bonnet. Then we had a lot of people jumping around, and then unfortunately, all of the fun was gone. Yep. All of the fun was gone, and the bonnet was lost. So, it did take a lot of people a lot of time to actually snap the bonnet off of my car, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it can be done with enough people climbing around the poor vehicle. Now, when we're setting up for the dangerous rally with the budget cars, uh, the police, as they always do with fail race stuff, turned up. And we were trying to get the police, like the wanted levels, to uh, go away. It was a bit of a mess with a lot of cars over here. And I came back to the most fail race of sights. The SC burst into fire for seemingly no apparent reason on the outside. The police are busy shooting at somebody. And there's a Primo rolling down a hill on its roof. And then the SC explodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it is literally, if you need to describe a fail, certainly if you need to describe a filming session on GTA 5 with Falrace, this is pretty much how it tends to go. Police make a nuisance of themselves, a car rolls over, and there's a small bit of fire. Now, we were also having a lot of problem keeping everybody connected when it came to the reverse racing. We were trying to set up the grid for my heat. We had the intruder there, the person, the driver, had just managed to disconnect. We we're still trying to get the other car to get connected. So we were kind of waiting and generally generally faffing around at the at the pier area when the AI decided to come and say hello. The uh, Rapid GT there, yeah, that's not a player car. That's an AI car that has made its way onto the pier, crashes into the sea, and is uh, none too keen on sticking around to see what on earth we were up to. Good old AI cars, really. Uh, however, uh, the next few outtakes are stuff that I did actually still have the, the voice recording from. Now, these things have uh, got relatively short gear ratios. You will spend a lot of time uh, we're going exploring around the outside of a golf buggy and it did not quite work for an overtake. Uh, these things, yeah, very short gear ratios, spend a lot of time buzzing into the limiter. Ooh, that's not what you're supposed to be doing at Forza. Thank you. Well, bugger. One, two, three, three, two, or not. Um, well, that's helpful. Well done, controller. You have apparently completely died. Ah, now you tell me. Well, that's a little bit late. I think it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? We win if the helicopter crashes. So, if the helicopter goes down, I mean, it's going to probably bump into stuff. <laughs> I love the way <laughs> the AIs are having issues. That looks like an attack helicopter. That does not look like a pleasant sight. Uh, not, a, not a good way already. There has been a massive explosion and a traffic light has been destroyed. That is something to shoot at. I mean, if it was a speed camera, I could understand a little bit. I mean, a traffic light. Ooh, this is not good. This is not good at all. That's a building. Okay, we're going for a, we're going for another tactic here. We're going to go for the turnaround tactic. Please distract the bugger. Oh, helicopter's down immediately. I think the helicopter may have hit a telephone pole. 
Um, well, that's a grand start. That's a grand start indeed. I mean, that's kind of victory for us. A little bit cheaty victory for us. Well, I say cheaty. A little bit straightforward. I think he may have got taken out by one of the spawning in. <laughs> one of the spawning in lampposts. Well, bugger. Please, sun, rise. Wherever you might be. Please rise. Well done. Yeah, everyone, remember there is a rock on the inside on the way into turn one. Oh dear, you're not getting out of there, are you? Guys! Oh, okay, got reset. Far enough out. That's alright. <laughs> That was fantastic. Well done. Well done. You will definitely go in the outtakes video over there. That was um, that was an impressive. That was a rolled from like zero miles an hour. Just, well, suddenly a million stars, no, probably nearer a billion stars, have appeared above us. So the moon's shifted position. What has the moon done? How is that? The, the moon went down and has now appeared in a different place in the sky. Guys, I don't know what planet we're on. Is this how Australia works? Well, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much for contributing to this series. I'm very glad that people are liking the, the Felhurst episodes. I'm... <laughs> can't believe it's quite got to 100 episodes of this series now so far. That is almost getting on two years that, uh, that I have been making this series. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, it's been an awful lot of fun seeing the silly, silly stuff that you guys have, have sent in. And there will be plenty more silliness to, uh, to come. Of course, we will resume normal service next week. That's going to be it from me, though. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.